Hello love, this is Eve Kristoff, your Love Life Muse. Welcome home to Eden. So how do you heal your migraine headaches? Here is a wonderful exercise you can even do with children. I used to suffer from many uh, migraine headaches when I was a little kid. Uh, I was dyslexic and I was failing every class at all times and I always felt like a failure. And my migraine started with negative thoughts usually. And so a, a, another child actually taught me this exercise that I from then on could do on myself and on the other children who were having headaches. And I've kept this exercise ever since. So it's really simple. You say to your friend who has a headache, uh, or yourself, you say, I have a cup of healing water over your head. I'm about to pour it into your brain. Tell me, as I pour it into your mind, what color is it? What color do you see that the water is? And you go like this. You pour the imaginary water into their head and they go orange and you go good. Now I'm pouring another cup of healing water full of magical color into your brain. Tell me, what color is it? You pour it again. Blue, blue they say, blue. Very good. Now I'm pouring another cup of healing water into your brain. Now you just keep doing this and doing this while they're lying there in their suffering and they keep going with the colors and the colors and the colors and by the time you've gotten to like 15, 20 colors, their headache will be gone. <laughs> so that's just an idea for you. See if it works for your beloved, especially for children. And darling, remember, headaches begin with bad thoughts, thoughts about positive things, especially that are happening that you're worrying about and you're put, pouring all this negative energy into the sacred and the sacred needs to have you shower it with the protection of positive thoughts, okay? This is the one, number one cause of headaches that people don't talk about. We know that water is a big contributor. If you're drinking enough water, if you're getting enough exercise and, and also that sugar for children is one of the major causes of their headaches. The moment they have sugar, they'll get a terrible headache. So keep the sugar to a minimum, have them drink more water, have yourself drink more water, get some more exercise, don't stay frozen on your computer or your phone for too many hours, okay, or minutes, <laughs> get, get that pumping action between the brain and, and the sacrum because that's where the fluid starts to um, mobilize and pump so that you feel good, but mainly, darling, think positive thoughts all the time. Reverse the negative thoughts and you will reverse the headache very quickly. So you can help your beloved or your child immediately to say, hey, are you worried about something? Is there something that's going on that we, we could um, talk about? And they'll tell you their worst fear. And all you do is feed, feed the fire of the opposite reality. Like I remember once my daughter a friend of hers was over and her friend was like really worried about feeling like an outcast at school that she just would never have the kind of friends that other kids had and we just said to her you're so amazing and you're so right you don't fit in there at that school but you could have other friends who are maybe the older seniors they would be the ones that would resonate with you because you're just precocious and you could have friends with, with college kids too and we just built her up built her up built her up and actually it ended up being true as soon as she reversed that belief about what was possible for herself she got a whole new set of friends that were her people and they were all older than her so you just feed that fire of, of the opposite reality and, and, and the, the bliss that can come out of pain and suffering and these headaches will relieve they will and remember that exercise pour the healing waters of color into your brain okay much love darling love life oh love did you fall in love and the guy is so freaking hot and you're having the most amazing time but you're like what happened how come I never come with this guy he's the best right and, and I should be coming <laughs> well you know I had something happen to me like that a while back where I met this wonderful guy and and you know he's smart and intelligent and he showered me with compliments and he was 
younger than me, like 15 years younger and, and much wiser than most older men. And I could respect his choices in his life. Even his bad choices were like coming from freedom <laughs> and healing. And you know, and, and I just loved him so much. And he was really a great lover. And in fact, he's a great kisser. He loved going down on me. <laughs> and he could last for hours and hours like some kind of God, you know. <laughs> But the problem was, was, like, I wasn't actually getting physically aroused to my potential. I was loving the whole thing, everything about him, but there wasn't even close to, like, the kind of uh, multi-orgasmic state of being that I uh, had had with my previous uh, lovers. So uh, he was really wise, because at one point he just asked me, he said, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I feel like there's something I'm missing. Can, can you tell me? And um, and it hit me like it, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, oh no, I have to tell him. <laughs> there is a huge difference between cock-centered sex and pussy-centered sex, right? So this is, oh my God, this is so hard to talk about because um, most guys have no clue what that really means. But I want to tell you before I even describe that, when I actually gave him the full description. <laughs> So that he understood what I was talking about. It went from him being one entry and, and I was just spasmodically orgasmic because he did pussy-centered lovemaking instead of cock-centered lovemaking with me. So what is this, right? What am I talking about? Well, you know, girlfriend, you know what I'm talking about. When they're cock-centered, everything about them comes first. They're... Um, and even their whole concept is this fast pumping thing that's eventually going to get an orgasm. It's all achievement oriented. And they'll do, they'll go down on us a little bit here and there, and that's supposed to quickly do something so they can get back to pumping and they can get to that um, release of their orgasm eventually. And the, the whole thing has a completely different rhythm than pussy centered lovemaking. So let me see if I can help you describe it to him. So what you want to say is in, in pussy centered lovemaking, um, tons of time is spent on the feminine, like a half hour to an hour of warming you up physically, like with massage and going down on you and kissing you and kissing you all over your body and rubbing all over your boobs. And, and it's just not about penetration at all for the longest time. Now, this is <laughs> also what's going on is it's making, it's teasing you so that you're longing for him by the time he comes into you. You're just like, give me, give me, give me, I gotta have you back! <laughs> you know, but the main thing that's happening is that your, the, the walls of your, your um, pussy are engorging like pillows. And, and as they engorge, then um, all of the, 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 the synapses of your clitoris are starting to fire. And um, so by the time he's done, a whole, whole lot of that, I don't, I mean, not the two to five minute thing where they think that's an eternity. They're like, I did you already. And they're back to their long journey. And then they, I did you for another minute, you know, that's cock centered uh, um, lovemaking where it's long expanses all about the cock and he and getting his blowjobs and on and on. And these tiny, tiny little bits about um, the way our female anatomy works. And for them, they're like, yeah, but you were having pleasure when I was, you know, pumping and stuff. Well, not as, not really, <laughs> it's just numb. I mean, it's just, it's okay, it's not bad. But compared to pussy-centered um, lovemaking, where whatever you figure out to do for her, <laughs> or he does for you, <laughs> is, is, waking up your potential to such a degree that yes, when the cock does come in, uh, now you're just wild, you're, you're shaking, you're, you're, you're laughing, you're crying, you're, it's a whole different thing for him. <coughs> now, the guy who accomplishes this, who goes for this, he's got to have so much passion, he's got to have so much love of the feminine, you know, and <laughs> he's got to have such a sense of adventure. <laughs> but the main thing is that 
he has a different sentiment. He, he, he's gets, when the guys want to just get their fill of woman, it's understandable. They're like, ah, I crave the feminine. I just want to get from her that thing I'm missing. I'm going to get it, you know? And so they're doing their pumping thing to get this thing from you and they never will. They're going to continue to be empty and then we're going to want more pumping, more, make it longer, longer, longer. And now all this pressure's on them about staying hard to finally achieve the mountaintop of your orgasm that's going to happen someday. But if they just go right into uh, pussy-centered lovemaking and you're already from the beginning into three, four orgasms because they really just all their attention on your pussy, not about entry, maybe not even fingers going entering, just the outside of you, the clitoris and, and the whole labia and a and, and little bit of entry here and there, you know. <laughs> Now, what happens is, they get so filled up, it's crazy. They actually, when you become multi-orgasmic and you can let them in and you can really, really feel um, that you're so taken care of, that's when they get, the, the paradox is, that's when they get filled up, is when they've given to the feminine. When they have completely done the whole thing reversed, it's all about the pussy-centered pussy lovemaking. So when they do come into you and it starts to be like you're un uncontrollably wild, they come out of you now and take a break and they go back to pleasuring you more. And what's happening is they're, you're surfing. They're surfing, they're, they're bringing up waves. They start really delicate, really slow and delicate. Instead of like going at you like full steam, so fast, 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 because they're supposed to make you come, that's, a, that's the male agenda, and that happens really fast, and it may work, but it's not pussy-centered lovemaking. And you may think, oh, he's a good lover, and you may not even know the difference between cock-centered and pussy-centered lovemaking. You might think, oh, he's fine, you know, I just, like, the whole thing's a little boring, and, you know, I don't really, like, it's not totally touching the core of my being. Uh, but when, when it's really all about you, and it really starts to take care of your anatomy the way you work, um, now, honey this thing about building the waves so say he builds the first wave of slow to delicate to sensual to like whoosh big orgasm though down again building you back down and back up through his hands through his mouth he, he enters you and now you you can feel him like on a, so many different levels now he comes out of you again he's teasing you and now he does the same thing again pleasuring you taking time with you no hurries no agenda simply enjoying you oh my god when he comes back in again you're just like over the top over the moon already now now you can see how this after a while this going this kind of love making the woman becomes wilder and wilder and wilder until she's crying <laughs> she's so happy <laughs> so this happened to me with this lover I was so proud of him for figuring it out when I spoke to him I was so proud of him for actually even asking, even noticing, you know, that there's some huge difference between what he was hoping to have happen and what was happening, you know, and, and immediately uh, m my whole sensation level went into the magical, unpredictable realm. So this is what you've got to do, sister. You've got to be brave enough. You've got to say, hey, it's great. Everything you're doing is great. It's just that it's cock-centered lovemaking. And, and cock-centered lovemaking is, is um, you know, it's when everything comes first about him. And, um, and, and it's just never going to fulfill him as much. And it certainly never will even come close to reaching your full potential as a woman, which you have all these other areas of your anatomy, sweetie, than the inner chambers. And when he comes into you, before you're ready, it's like the walls of your vagina are thin and hard. They may be slippery enough because you may be pretty turned on, but they're still thin and hard. And when you are completely aroused and that time has been taken for you, your walls are pillowy. They're, 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 they're plush and they're full of, of, of engorged synapses that are firing. Imagine how fulfilling that is for him to know his impact is... Is, is, is sending you into bliss and, 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 and this will send him into bliss and give him so much more energy for what he puts out. Okay, hope this helps love, love light. Mm.